Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. Five homebrew heroes. Now, these are not in any particular order, except of course, for number one. Number one is the one, the only, Peter Parker. Victor Kilo 3, Yankee Echo. But very, very quickly, I'm just going to show you the homebrew project that I am proudest of. It's been 27 years in the making, and this is my son. We went to a local blues gig in Ashfield in Sydney called Miss Seely's, and it was a jam session, and he wasn't gonna get up because he's actually a jazz player, not a blues player, but uh, he was kind of vibing with it, so he said, can I jump on the piano? And this is one of the solos, completely improvised, he's never played with these guys before, that he did. Very proud daddy and mummy. Now, a couple of years ago, I embarked on a return to university, hence the name of this channel, The Art of Engineering. I'm an art teacher, art trained, and I decided I wanted to try and get that engineering degree. I had thought about it at the end of high school and had decided that I was too dumb and too bad at mathematics to give it a crack, which um, resulted in me heading off to the Australian Maritime College and having a fantastic time as a ship's radio officer, so I do not regret that choice one bit but I really just wanted to find out whether I could uh, get through an engineering degree. Now, in the end, that was short-circuited by ham radio. But I did pass the first year and a half of the course, got through all of the harder mathematics and physics units, so certainly satisfied my um, big question mark that I had in my head about whether I was clever enough to do it. In the end, it was about whether I actually wanted to continue and finish doing it considering the fact that quite often in the past when I've made something that I'm interested in my career, it kind of takes the enjoyment out of it. That and the fact that I was going to have a huge hex debt that I probably wouldn't be able to repay before I died made me decide that uh, I was going to continue my quest of all things technical via ham radio. Now, Peter Parker is the main reason why I returned to ham radio after nearly 30 years away. And I started watching his videos while I was casual teaching <laughs> and uh, naughty me and just got hooked immediately by all the uh, homebrew experiments that he was doing. And I bought this book here, the Australian Ham Radio Handbook, kind of gave me a little bit of a roadmap as to where the hobby was in the present day, which helped out immensely. I've done a review on this book, Ham Radio playlist below. And Peter Parker is the mad scientist of homebrew. He has all these great experiments that he does. He does quite simple stuff and then quite complex stuff and everything in between. And he likes to ugly build a lot of the time, which is something that I'm into as well. And it's very organic, the whole process, and very exciting. So please check out his channel and I'll just show you a little bit of uh, what he gets up to. Let's go. <laughs> Frequency agility, absolutely important, whether it's a VFO, DDS or VXO, it doesn't matter. You just need to cover the whole band or close to it. Crystal controlled rigs belong in the bin. <laughs> Am I going to get contacts with this breadboard CW QRP transmitter? We'll find out in a moment. The Nobelist Wonder, a 7 MHz SSB transceiver that's so simple it can be documented on a single piece of A4 paper. And that is the whole schematic diagram. There's just 11 transistors and one IC. Yet its 2 watt signal is punchy enough 
to be heard far and wide was this very simple two transistor CW transmitter. It was VXO controlled and operates on 7 megahertz. Output power is around 5 watts. The crystal oscillator is a BD139 and the IRF510 forms the power amplifier. I've now built another version. Still two transistor but with more power output. You're tuned to the art of engineering. Don't forget to press like, make sure you subscribe and you've hit the notification bell. Then put down your phone, go over to your rig and make someone's day. Answer their CQ call. Damn, forgot, what's up next? I plan all my videos in my sketchbook, which I also take on trips with me. So, love to draw, you know, stuff on the aeroplane, uh, lots of drawing on the aeroplane, in the dark a lot of the time, and just have lots of fun. You can see here I also, you know, try and nut out technical stuff that's giving me headaches about, uh, you know, what I'm doing. And, hey, bit of a shopping scene in, uh, I think that was in Taiwan, that's my little nephew there. Yeah, just love to draw, but uh, we have some uh, planning happening in here as well. So, just thought I'd like to share a little bit of my world. And here is the plan for this video. And yes, number two, number two is Charlie Morris, Zulu Lima 2, Charlie Tango Mike. Let's go. So, this video was looking at the uh, double balanced modulators um, these will be home brew so this will be the configuration uh, we'll have two toroids um, both uh, they will be FT 37-43s uh, one for here and one over here and then for the diode ring there we'll use four matched 1N4148s one um, like I've done in the past and I'll do it again um, I'm gonna have a small 100 ohm trim pot here just to trim out the null uh, in terms of the balancing. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to have these as swappable modules. Um, I very regularly change bands so the fact I have to change two filters for me is absolutely no problems at all. So by way of design um, as I just said there are simple uh, half wave filters so uh, two tank circuits, um, two inductors in series and then three parallel capacitors. So that was Charlie Morris. The thing to remember about those first two home brewers is quite often Peter will give you a circuit diagram. It's not a complete how to do it, but it'll get you on the, on the track to getting it done. Now, Charlie Morris, his approach is basically just sharing what's on his bench at the time that uh, he makes the video. And he does not uh, pretend that this is a how to video. Nor does he mislead that this is going to help you build exactly what he is building. But what he does do is share his thought processes. The educator in me would call this his metacognitive strategy. So what he's thinking when he's actually building these rigs, which is actually more helpful because it certainly makes you more self-reliant. Now, I've used uh, Charlie's videos. When I built my double balance modulator, diode double balance modulator, try and say that after you've had a few drinks, in my chocolate box receiver, just a tick, I'll show you that. Uh, receiver and this is the receiver here now this receiver as amazingly bird nest like as it is was my first attempt and success at building a receiver and the double balance mixer that i used in this was care of charlie morris and his help he showed me how to actually match up the diodes for this and how to actually build the dbm so mr morris i salute you for all the great work you've done He's also great for band pass filters, low pass filters, and hints on how to build various types of rigs. So just a really fantastic resource for home brewers. Oh, nearly forgot to say, once again, I've got videos uh, in the links below about that receiver and lots of other stuff. So check out the ham radio playlist if you find this video engaging and interesting. Now, number three, in my list and someone very close to my heart although i don't know him personally is drew diamond the victor kilo 3 x-ray uniform 
Now, I have done a review on my channel, and I will put a separate link for this down below underneath the ham radio playlist. And I will actually put a link to uh, Peter Parker's channel as well, because you'll find that fascinating as well. This is Drew Diamond's Projects for the Radio Amateur, volumes one to four. So there's four fantastic volumes of this series. And I have in the video where I do the review, I give you a link to where you can actually purchase these wonderful books. Now, a lot of the projects are not recent projects. And perhaps some people will say, too old school, not worth my time. I can honestly tell you, there's so many hints that Drew Diamond gives you in this series about workshop practices and how to build ugly style and just ideas. And a lot of the time, you might be looking for uh, a design for a band pass or low pass filter. You'll find that in here. A lot of the time, you'll have a design in here that uses a free running uh, LC VFO, and you can marry it to a DDS VFO and bring it into the present day if you so desire to do so. If you want to be nostalgic and do a bit of a, an old school build, you've got that here. What have I used this for? Viewers of my channel will know a very recent video. I did a 40 meter receiver, which was based on a direct conversion a transceiver that was in these uh, fantastic books. I have also built a 20 amp Miser supply that was a design by Drew Diamond that runs the entire shack. Um, I will actually show you that now. Turbines to speed. It's in an old PC case. And this is a heat sink from an audio amplifier from a car. And as you can see there, 13.9, it should be 13.8, but there's an adjustment on the side that I can fix that up with. Um, and it's drawing two amps presently, driving my Hermes Light 2 and various other things, my uh, antenna selector, et cetera, et cetera. And here is my field strength meter, care of Drew Diamond. And this is the Drew Diamond design that I built so that I can play with antennas. And there's a video on my channel about this one as well. And whilst we're at it, uh, Drew Diamond also uh, does a discussion in his books about rewinding of transformers. Now he talks about rewinding microwave transformers like these ones here for uh, vacuum tube uses. Uh, he doesn't advocate using them for a 20 amp supply, but he does uh, mention the fact that you can lower the magnetizing current, which is a problem for these types of transformers because they're not very efficient if you put them in series. So I use that information, put two of these in series, rewound them to provide the proper voltage for a uh, 20, 20 amp, 13.8 volt supply. And voila, I had a power supply that was running very well and cool enough so that it, uh, the transformer or the transformers were not overheating. Because if you put one transformer in, it gets very hot. So that is some of the stuff that I've learned, certainly not all of the stuff I've learned, from this wonderful series of books by Drew Diamond. Number four. Number four is Microwave One channel. And Microwave One, Mike, Whiskey Uniform Two Delta, is a fantastic homebrew resource for anyone who wants to build old school. Um, he's got other content as well, but the stuff he's got on more old school type builds, um, intros to building with valves, all that sort of stuff from the halcyon age of uh, homebrew is available on his channel. I must say also that there's just a lot of general ham content as well that's really, really useful. When my um, TS520, which is hopefully in the background here, blew up um, for about the 15th time, um, I finally got to the point where I said, I am going to replace the finals in it. And that was a little bit daunting because even though I'm an ex-ship's radio officer, I actually never changed the finals in a transmitter, the valve finals. And I knew that I had to neutralize the tubes and I had no idea how to go about that. And Mike had a series on the TS520 where he talks about the operating of it, the aligning of it, all that great stuff in fantastic detail. And I was able to not only install those tubes, but neutralize them um, successfully. And since doing that, the TS520 hasn't missed a beat, and I've used it on a number of occasions, and it's been very, very reliable. So a, an old boat anchor resurrected from the dead.
So I'm listening to some CX communications. That's CQCX up here in the 7100 region of 40 meters. People are using uh, older equipment and uh, trying to get some of the old commercial and homebrew gear on the air in the old 40 meter novice band. So as we continue in our series on the Type 27 uh, Hartley Oscillator, um, we start out with the uh, 6J5 last seen on 80 meters. So some of you may be wondering why I'm dressed in a suit today. Uh, for this video, we're going to be discussing a legend, a giant, in the uh, e electronics experimenter area. I'm talking about Alfred Powell Morgan. And Morgan, of course, uh, the author of uh, the boy's first book of radio and electronics and the whole series that went along with that, uh, along with some foundational uh, books at the turn of the century. And uh, one of his famous projects from the boy's first book of radio and electronics was the single tube regen, which we're going to cover. Um, of course, uh, we will culminate the two-part series in a regenerative receiver. And last but not least is the Solder Smoke podcast by Bill O'Meara and Pete Giuliano. And this is a really fantastic resource. It's a great listen to. It goes for about an hour. And, you know, you can sit on the exercise bike or on the rowing machine and listen to people passionately discussing homebrew. Now, Bill O'Meara is very much more an old school builder. He loves free running VFOs and uh, discrete component rigs. Pete Giuliano, on the other hand, is uh, more into the DDS VFO and the SI 5351A clock chip. And they have this wonderful little uh, banter about what the uh, advantages and disadvantages of both those approaches are. It's just a really fantastic thing to listen to. And more recently, he's been uh, pushing the YouTube angle of it as well, which is something that's going to be really great too. It adds a visual element to it. And I think uh, in no time at all, that channel is going to have to grow because the podcast itself is just so successful and such an interesting thing to watch. So check it out. I will put a link below to that channel. And I really would encourage you to uh, tune in and listen to what's being discussed and it's also a little bit of a community as well. I'm not on the Facebook page yet and all that other stuff, but there's so many ways you can interact with other homebrew people and uh, grow the community because that's what this is all about. We want more ham radio operators experimenting and building their own gear. And for those that don't homebrew and are wondering why we do it, we do it because it is such a hoot. It's so exciting. When you get that receiver working, regardless of how crappy it is compared to the uh, store-bought rig you've got, it's like your own child. You've created it. It's a very exciting thing to behold and to play with. So if you haven't given homebrew a try, dip your toe in the water, buy some wire, build some antennas. It's not that hard to do. You can get yourself an antenna analyzer. If you buy yourself a nano VNA, it's about $50 to $100 to buy. And there's plenty of videos online how to use it. And you will have the time of your life playing with antennas. And then hopefully that will lead you into the uh, wonderful excursion that is ham homebrew. 24. Pete, what, what's the number? Solder Smoke 250. Crank it in, Robert. Crank it in, Ralph. Holy cow. Crank it in, fellas. This is, this is, like, a, this is like a milestone. The 250. Date. The it date. Is. You huh? got to put the date in there. You got to tell them the date. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Saturday, February 10th, 2024. Yeah, we got criticized for not saying that, and people said, I don't know which one it is. There you go. Oh, oh now you know. There you go. All so right. I have three perfect 40 megahertz, 25 kilohertz <laughs> wide <you> filters. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to my world, Dean. This means you're going to ultimately have to build at least three of these transceivers. <laughs> so so that, was, that was my first tale of woe, and it echoes a lot of things that you guys talk about all the time. Know your tools. Know what you're looking at. And you mentioned it uh, before when you're talking about the quadrature. You're looking at the output of this thing, you're saying, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you got to know, you got to know how to interpret what the device is telling you. 
otherwise you you know you just spend your time uh uh, uh. so that was that was kind of tail of all number one so i have a perf- i have a perfect filter his transceiver is a jc penny transceiver i mean oh man look at that jc penny there it is you could see it on the screen jc penny pete i was telling dean the last time i bought anything from jc penny i think it was socks Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're selling CB radios. Knock Actually, off the, the board Sears itself Rose is not Rocker. that bad. It's not Sears that bad. Rocker. So anyway, we we've got that going. And, and, and I've had one sided QSOs. I've I've heard a lot, but I haven't actually spoken to anybody. Yeah, you're going to do it soon. You're going to do it, and we're going to we're going to modify more of these things. Well, like Mike, I believe attire is very very important. Now, in the past, I have been accused of being a clown, which probably guilty as charged, but. Uh, I've decided to finish this video in the correct attire in full radio officer uniform with epaulets. So thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you're still here, you're at the end. I really appreciate the support. And please, like I've said in the past, only about 10% of the people that watch these videos actually are subscribed. So you would really be supporting the channel immensely if you reach down, click that subscribe button and bell notification, smash it. Life of the Morse Key 73, and I will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering. And it's really hot. 30 degrees plus. <laughs> <laughs>